It's not often I like to spend a lot of time and play around in the pig pen when it comes to internet beef. I usually like to put that beef on a taco and just eat it one time, and I don't think there's any reason to go back for seconds. Uh, typically, the cycle of life works. I'll make a video on something or someone, make jokes about it, talk about it, and then that person will respond with their own jokes, saying their own piece, and that's that. That's proper internet drama etiquette. That's just a beautiful thing, the way the Lord intended. I don't usually like to go back and respond to their response. It just seems highly unnecessary and feels more like milking a situation than actually like making it entertaining or just generally talking about something. Of course, I have done it in the past a few times where it really feels like it's an important situation and one that I really do need to respond to again, or if it's just a highly wild one and I just have that little devil on my shoulder that I can't persuade otherwise and it forces me to make yet another video about something silly. But usually I steer clear of it. And today is one of those special cases where I am going to be responding to someone's response. Uh, two days ago now, I made a video on a self-proclaimed super wealthy guru who was talking about how he could take your girl because he has so much money and if you make less than 10k a month you shouldn't go to the gym you're a fucking idiot if you go to the gym it was just really embarrassing stuff and i was just pointing out how silly and stupid all of it was just making fun of him and he didn't take too kindly to it so he put on his extra small big boy pants and said all right bub so you want to tussle with the lack of muscle i'll challenge you to a fight so he made a fight declaration to me to, like, box me. And this is the main reason I'm talking about this goober again. When you challenge someone to a fight because they made jokes about you, I feel like you lose on the spot because all you're showing is that the jokes hurt your feelings. They got under your skin. So now you're coping with this defense mechanism of, I'll beat you in a fight because of what you said. And I feel like that's just the ultimate fucking L. Now... Let's walk through this hypothetical. Let's say I took up the malnourished Martian on his fight offer and he beats my ass. He brutalizes me somehow. He takes his McLaren out and he's like, get a load of this tough guy. And he starts wailing on me. What does that change about everything I've said about him? It's all still the truth. All the jokes are still applicable. It's just never fully computed with me because it always comes across as even whinier and more pathetic, at least in my eyes. And I'm sure the reason he's doing it is just for the sake of soaking up as much attention as possible. He makes it very clear in the beginning of the video that he's doing all of this for views, so I have no doubt that's the play. But what if I was to accept his offer? I feel like that would be his legitimate worst nightmare, because I am 100% sure he's never thrown a punch in his life, not even in his dreams, because his bones would shatter. And let's not forget, I do keep that big iron on me. And these bythons, they don't play nice. But being in great shape doesn't correlate to being a great fighter. So who knows, maybe this guy absolutely could slap me around in a physical fight. But we won't find out because I don't plan on accepting the offer regardless. Um, it was by this guy Penguins, whatever his name is. Brother, you have the video up on the screen. What do you mean Penguins, whatever his name is? You could have just opened your eyes. Are you too wealthy to just read? Can you read? It's Penguin Z0. Uh, he was talking a bunch of crap about my video. So we're going to respond. This is my reaction. Okay, we're not going to get heated in this. I'm not really massively triggered. I just want to take advantage of the views. So we're going to get right into this. Immediately, this little weasel's already lying. I wasn't talking crap about his videos. I was talking shit about his videos. Okay, I don't only own a McLaren. I used to have a 570 S that was white. If you follow me for a while, you know this. It was a convertible drop top. Okay, I had that car, sold it. Got a yellow Maserati, then got bored, and I was like, I got to get another McLaren. So I have a McLaren, a Maserati Ghibli. That's a one of five, by the way, which costs way more than this entire fucking YouTube channel's ad revenue on a monthly basis. And then... Man, he's really putting that egg on my face right now. I look real silly. This guy means business. He's got a lot of expensive cars. Holy shit. And he sets the record straight. The McLaren isn't rented. He showed the keys. And then even mentioned that he puts his Instagram sticker on the back. So that's, I'd prefer if he just rented it. You put your fucking Instagram handle as a sticker on the back of your McLaren. It's already worthless now. You've ruined it. I literally post this thing all around. I have my Instagram sticker on the back. People have seen the videos all over. You can't rent that every single day. Okay, so this part pisses me off because... He says the name wrong like eight times in a row. It's not McLaren, it's McLaren. Okay, so... 
That's how we know this guy doesn't really have a lot of status. He doesn't understand these things. Well, you can't argue with him there. That is a bulletproof case he's presented. I wasn't pronouncing it to his liking. I wasn't saying McLaren, though. I was just saying it fast. McLaren, 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 McLaren. Like, it's not a hard word to pronounce. I don't know why he's trying to nitpick that. But anyway, I don't need to go through this with a fine-tooth comb. I'll show you the, uh, the creme de la creme here. I'll give you the climax where he mentions the, the boxing match with me. The funny part is, is that I don't need to be in shape. And you know what? I'm going to make this statement in the video. We should do a boxing match with him because he does not. I'll box this guy. I'll, I'll, I'll do something with him because I guarantee you he can't outrun me in a mile. Okay. I can still to this very day with the amount of times that I don't work out, I can still run a six minute mile, maybe five and a half minute mile. Whoa, stand back. We got ace athlete out here who could beat me in a race, which he absolutely could. I have no doubt about that. I can count on two fingers. The people I can beat in a foot race. One, a toddler that hasn't learned to walk yet, so he can only crawl. And two, a 90-year-old that's using a walker. Everything else is going to be a close match. Though I don't know what running has to do with boxing. Uh, the, the two don't really correlate. They're very different. But anyway, the, the boxing offer. This is what I'm saying. I find that to just be completely worthless. Like, that has nothing to do with anything I was saying at all. If I was making the claim that I could beat his ass, then that boxing challenge holds a lot of water. Then that holds a lot of weight. I was just making fun of him. I've just always said, like, if you challenge someone to a fight because they hurt your feelings, that's an embarrassing look for you. It'd be a very different story if I was the one instigating, like, oh man, this guy, I'd beat his ass all over the place. I'd beat him like a drum. Then him challenging me to a fight's like, okay, he's stepping up. Now, am I going to follow through on what I was saying? And then it's on me. And then I look like a bitch if I don't. And I feel like that's not a super hot take because usually... It's a fight fire with fire, so if you're getting insulted or you feel insulted because of the jokes, you insult back or make jokes back. And that's the accepted uh, battle terms. It, it, for an example, Uwe Boll, terrible director, used to make a lot of awful films, but his big shtick that made him a legendary clown is he would challenge his harshest critics to boxing matches. Critics that insulted his movies, he would challenge to a boxing match and he became an absolute laughingstock, even though somebody once accepted it and lost. Uwe Boll was still the bigger joke, and in fact was even a larger joke after winning against this critic. He didn't look tougher, he looked even stupider. It's just one of those things where when you get offended and your defense is, I'll fight you for it, I just feel like it's a bad look. If I don't go to the gym, that doesn't mean I'm insecure, it means that I'm actually more confident in my body. I'm very talented in other areas, I don't need to have big muscles to be good or athletic at things, right? A lot of the things that we challenge ourselves with that we think that we can't achieve are all up here. It really has not a lot to do with physical. I'm a marketer. I don't need to be massively fit. Okay. I like to have all my stuff up here. Doesn't mean I have to go to the gym and, and be this muscle maniac that this areas of their own preference. I think that it's a waste of time. I think it's a mounds of insecurity. This is the section where I was talking about his shaming of people that go to the gym and calling them fucking idiots for it. So he's immediately going off the rails into like lecture douchebag mode where he's like, well, actually a lot of the obstacles that you encounter are mental, not physical. Like that has nothing to do with anything right now. You're fighting some fucking ghosts. That doesn't matter. The whole point was, it, I even mentioned, if you're confident in your body, that's great. Why are you shaming people that want to look different than you do? You shitting on people who go to the gym insinuating that they're poor and have no right to be there unless they're making more than $10,000 a month comes across as bitter, delusional, and insecure. And for some reason, he tries to flip that around by saying, well, no, actually going to the gym portrays insecurity. Like the delusion is almost impressive. You're not even making any good points here. You're not even defending your stance very well. No one's forcing you to go to the gym. No one's twisting your arm like, hey, listen, buster, get your ass in the gym. You don't have to. No one's making you. But why are you shitting on people that do? It's not a waste of time at all. It's not even a huge time commitment to get in good shape. An hour a day and then changing your diet around to make your health better? Like, it's not even this huge detriment that's going to lead to them being broke or anything. It's, it's just absolute nonsense from a guy who I'm certain has never picked up anything heavy in his life. Because if you look at a person who lifts and a person who doesn't lift but has a lot of skill sets and is, has high intellect... The guy with a lot of intellect, well, with a lot of path and purpose and skill sets, it's going to win. Just because you can lift things doesn't mean you're smart. It just means that you can just lift shit. I mean, it, it's like... So much useless drivel and cope for why he doesn't lift. You can do both here, dummy. You can lift and still be highly intellectual. Even if being in great shape isn't necessary for the skill set for your career path, it's still probably worth doing because it's not a massive time investment for it. 
lifting occasionally and eating better is not somehow going to ruin your chance of success and lead to you being broke and unable to find a career path that makes more than 10k a month or whatever the fuck you're talking about. This is just all mental gymnastics to justify you personally not wanting to go to the gym. Just don't. But I don't understand the point in shitting in people who do. It's just so weird. There's no excuse to why you can't make 10k a month. And honestly, you, like, life doesn't really start until $30,000 a month. I make a bunch of videos about this. I know a lot of people think this guy is rage baiting or playing a character, but I have good reason to believe that he is completely genuine. From everything I've seen from him, this really does seem to be the way he views the world. He proudly proclaims that life doesn't start till you're making 30 k a month, and that there's absolutely no excuse for somehow making less than 10 k a month. This is a guy who lost touch with reality long, long ago. It's not what I'm talking about as far as protect. It's not about the physicality. It's about the fact that a matter that she needs to feel safe and protected in a nice home with a good financial situation, be able to raise kids and be able to go out with her friends and, and still be the woman that she wants to be and have her own path and purpose. It's not about the physicality. Okay. And also if you make enough money, you get a security team. Okay. Now, I don't have one, but all I'm saying there is that you use money to give you extra freedoms. So he made a point to say that if you're not making six figures a year, you need to break up with your girlfriend right now because he'll probably fucking steal her from you because he has more money, which means he can protect her and provide for her better than you can. He explains that the protecting thing wasn't about physicality, like physically being able to defend her from harm. It was being able to give her like a big house and shelter and financial freedom to spend money to go out with her friends and raise a kid. Now, I, I live in the real world where you don't need six figures to be able to provide a safe household like that to afford those kind of good things. But he's out there in fucking Narnia fantasy land where apparently you need six figures for that. But regardless, what really stands out to me is his last claim where when you're making a lot of money, you get a security team. That was a huge red flag. That sounded the alarms, the sirens blared that this guy is most likely a fraud and pretending he is fake. We at our warehouse actually did look into hiring a full-time security team for the property. It is an outrageous expense. Uh, from all of the research I've done on his media company, I can neither confirm nor deny if his claims are accurate about it generating nine figures for his clients. The only place that's spouting those numbers are his websites, and he has fucking three of them. One of them hasn't been maintained in the last three years. All it does is drip feed fanfic about his upbringing, as well as 404 when you try and look up anything else about it. And then underneath a documentary he made where he sucks his own dick, it's just this giant white page, just this void of emptiness. So there's no good information there, but on his other two websites, he does have claims that it's nine figure generating. But as he mentions in his response, that doesn't mean he's worth nine figures. From all of the numbers I can find online, and I always take these with a grain of salt, his net worth is between three to six million dollars. If those numbers are even close to accurate, he himself couldn't afford a full-time security team. He lives where I do, in Florida. If you wanted to hire just one full-time bodyguard for a property or whatever, you are looking at an expense of roughly 150 k for one person. That's not even a full team. He would run out of money in like two years, perhaps. So it, to me, seems like he has no fucking clue what he's talking about. He's making it sound like this is a common purchase people start making when they start getting a lot of money, when it is not. This is something that's reserved only for like the highest income individuals or actual large businesses. It, to me, this really just feels like he's pretending. And making more than 10K a month doesn't enable you to magically protect her better. If you see how he edits the video right there, he trimmed it because he knew what he was about to say was stupid. That's the only time where he trimmed the video, where he cut it. Because he knows that he was about to say that it's not important to make 10K a month when I know damn well with 12 million subscribers, he makes more than $10,000 a month. It's hypocritical for him to say that because he has things behind him right now that from what I can see, they're not cheap things. This is a big gotcha moment from him here. An astute observation, he noticed a cut but then falsely claims it's the only one I made. Bro, I make cuts in videos. This isn't all just one take. Sometimes I actually do get videos in just like one full fucking take, but usually I don't. I'll fumble words and that's when it gets cut and I'll go back and explain things differently, say something else entirely. It's all very normal. I actually just did it. I'm not sure if you noticed. It's not uncommon. In a live stream, I can't do that. So yeah, all of that's one take. But I mean, you, you're in the space, right? Like you have to know how video editing works and video making. 
I don't know why he's trying to catch me on a cut and assuming that I was about to say that making 10k a month isn't important. And it's also not hypocritical either, if I was to make that point. You don't need to be making 10k a month to be happy. You just simply don't. Your whole personality is money. I lived the majority of my life without even imagining $10,000 a month, and I was happy then too. Just as happy then as I am now. It's not a necessary, absolute must-have thing, and you're not a failure if you don't get $10,000 a month. It, it, contrary to the delusion that you're uh, fucking encumbered by, you don't need 30 k a month to start living. You don't. No, like, I can't believe anyone actually thinks that way. What an outrageous claim to make. So, I wasn't going to say that, but I'll say it now. You don't need 10 k a month in order to go to the gym, to have a loving relationship, to provide for your girlfriend, protect her, have a happy life, have happy kids. You don't ever need to breach 10 k a month to reach that level. It's not a bad spot. I don't need a massive house with 18 fucking bedrooms with nobody to vacate them. That's, that's a stupid financial investment. investment, okay? The car is not because the car is for marketing. The car is something I enjoy. Houses are stationary. They don't move. Cars move and I have fun with the wind in my face. Finally, something reasonable here. I pointed out that his house tour is a very nice spot, but it's not a mega mansion, which confused me because he's all about flexing his cars, for example. And he defended it by saying that it's a nice spot, but he doesn't need a big house. He doesn't want a huge mansion. It'd be a bad investment for him financially. He doesn't want a lot of eyes on him. And all of that makes sense. Completely agree. You don't need a huge house or anything like that. But then why doesn't that same line of logic apply to your McLaren and your supercars, your extremely expensive cars? He tries to say that the cars are for marketing. Why? Because you slap your Instagram handle on the back of one of them? I'm just going to hit you with the cold water and give you the truth. There has never been a single living, breathing human being that has seen a car with an Instagram handle on it that thought to themselves, wow, that piqued my interest. I can't wait to check out that Instagram account of that cool guy driving that car. 100% of the time, people write you off as driving a cringe mobile. That is the worst marketing. It's like anti-marketing. It makes people laugh at you. But regardless, with the house, you're right. You don't need a big house. Same way you didn't need those expensive cars. But you mentioned that you have fun with them. Well, I'd actually understand if you did have a mega mansion because it'd fall in line with what you were just talking about where guys who don't make six figures a month need to break up with their girlfriends because they can't protect and provide. If you had a big house, you would be providing for your girlfriend, right? You mentioned that you have a girlfriend. I imagine she lives with you. You mentioned people live with you. Wouldn't getting a huge house pretty much be exactly what you preach? You're giving her a great place to be protected in, provided, afforded luxuries, raise a kid in. Like that falls more in line with what you're saying than owning these worthless supercars. Like that feels like it should be so much further down the list of priorities for your money. Now, I completely agree. You don't need a big house. But what you're not recognizing is that the way you're living your life in terms of like your house is exactly what I and everyone else with a brain is saying. That you don't need 30k a month to live a happy life. You don't need 30k a month to start living, as you claim. You are in a house right now with your girlfriend and whoever else that people could afford without 30k a month and you are happy. And I imagine they are happy as well. So the life you are currently living contradicts the one that you are preaching about. You are living a lifestyle that is not 30k a month. You are living something that people can live right now without even coming close to that. And yet you're shitting on them if they don't reach it and shaming them for not making that kind of money. It's hypocritical, I would argue. I just wanted to mention that because I found it to be the most interesting component here. I ended up going through more of the video here than I planned on. I just found the whole thing to be just kind of fascinating in a way. So I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. And uh, that's about it. See ya.